In this video, we're going to continue on with the inner VLAN routing portion, and we're going to focus on layer 3 switching. Now, this is a different paradigm, a different design perspective, where a logical SVI or switch virtual interface is the default gateway for the layer 3 boundary. Now, what this means is we create an interface VLAN for a already existing VLAN that we want to create. And the reason why it has to be an existing VLAN is the SBI itself will not be able to uh, to achieve the up up status, so line line and protocol, unless there is a VLAN created or a VLAN broadcast domain created, and at least one interface in the up up position has that VLAN on it. Meaning, if it's an access, whether it's an access port or a trunk link, it, it doesn't make a difference. But at least one interface has to be in the up up status in that VLAN or have that VLAN riding over it if it's a trunk link. You can create multiple SBIs as a endpoint to, to communicate with. You might have an SBI created for SNMP traffic or what have you. And until you enable IP routing on the connection, so until you turn to go to global config and type in IP routing, that will not allow you to do any type of inter VLAN communication. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to take the logic that we took for um, inter VLAN routing with router on a stick, and we're going to move that one hop down onto switch one, and we're going to create a couple of SBIs. We're going to create an SBI for all three of the um, the VLANs we've got created, 14, 25, and 36, and that will allow us to communicate between them. Now, once we've communicated and created all of those inter interfaces, the next step will be able to test reachability between the three. But instead of the traffic having to, to ride the link between the router and the switch, or from the switch to the router and then back down to the switch again, it'll be staying with inside the layer three switch, which is the uh, uh, switch one in this case. Now. For full disclosure, you can have the default gateway sitting on any one of those switches. So we could theoretically have the SPIs created here on switch one, two, or three, or switch three, or switch five, whatever. That really doesn't make much of a difference. What does make the difference, and where it comes into play, is understanding what it is that your um, the the concept that you're trying to, to, to break down. You're, it doesn't make the difference where you place the default gateway. It can be placed at any one of these levels. It's once you've placed it, what do you do with it? Is that where you want it to be? I'm going to put a one hop down, and what I'm going to do is on switch one, I'm going to go ahead and jump in here, and I'm actually going to go to PC or to router two, and I'm going to go to interface, fast see this has zero slash zero, and I'm going to shut down the interface. What that will do is that will prevent the, um, the interface from responding. And what that's also going to do is it's going to take down the, the SBIs as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to switch one. I'm going to do a show VLAN brief. I have VLANs 14, 25, and 36. I'm going to go to global config. And I'm going to type in interface VLAN. And I'm going to specify so. From global config, what we'll do is we'll type in interface VLAN and we'll specify 14. Once we go in here, then we're going to have to specify the IP address. So we'll type in IP address is going to be 10.1.14.2 um, and give it a slash 24 uh, subnet mask. Now it says that the line protocol is it's an up down status. So do show IP interface brief. Now we're, we're administratively down at the moment, so I'm going to type in no shut to bring the interface up. And as long as one interface is up, up, then that'll come up. Now, how do you know? On this switch here, we've actually got a couple. So we type in do show interface trunk, we're going to have a couple of interfaces in the up, up position with VLAN 14. As long as one is up, we're in good shape. I'm going to go back and I'm going to type in interface VLAN 25. The IP address is going to be 10.1.25.2 slash 24. And I'm going to say no shut. You have to no shut this, the SBIs. That's going to bring that guy up. And then we're going to do 
uh, 36 and then there we have it so I'm gonna go ahead and no shut them so there we have it. so do show IP interface brief now they're all up and they're all running the trick here would be to go in here and do a ping to 10.1.14.2 once the the ARP goes through and everything is learned because now the problem we're going to run into is ping, yeah eventually it should respond let's go back to switch one and Let's do ping 10.1.14.10. Might take a couple of moments for the uh, the ARP table to, to flush out. So PC1 show ARP. Okay, so okay, so um, We've got that ARP table. Let's go to switch one and do a do show ARP. And we see that 14.2 is this Mac right here. Let's see if that is similar to what it is on PC1. And that is the Mac. Okay, so there it goes. So it's a little slower than you would normally see in a traditional environment. But here's the thing. Let's go ahead and ping 25.2. That one's going to work as well. Now, here's the thing, and I want to just double check on switch one. I'm going to do a do show IP route. Okay, IP routing is enabled on this guy by default, apparently. So, do show run pipe include IP route. IP routing, I should say. Um, let's see, show run all, include IP routing. There it goes. So I want to actually turn this off because right now the switch is a layer three switch and I don't want it there. I want it to demonstrate what it would look like if IP routing was not enabled. So no IP routing. So now if I type in do show IP route, I don't have a routing table. We go back to PC1, and I try to ping 25.2. 25.2, it should not work. And the reason it won't work is because there's no way for it to communicate. But I should still be able to ping. Fourteen dot two. That one should work all day long. Well, What's ironic about this is every time I try I make a small change or what have you, it always seems to Let's go to uh, switch one and do a do ping 10.1.14.10. It usually takes a moment for it to actually start to work. Okay, so there it's starting to respond now, which is awesome. So there it goes. But PC1, twenty-five dot two though, that that does too. Okay, um, that sh technically shouldn't. I see why it would though, because you've got proxy ARP. Um, where switch one says do show IP interface brief. Um, because of the fact that we're physically connected to it, you should be okay. But if I go back to PC1, I try to ping. Um, let's try to ping this guy. That should fail. And the reason why it would fail is there's actually no inter-VLAN routing going on. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go and to, can I do a ping, an extended ping? I do a count? Yes, I count. Uh, yes, I can. <laughs> yes, I can. 
um, and I can do a full data ping, full data size ping. So we're going to ping uh, 25.10 dash C for let's say 100 and the uh, dash L is going to be 1500. Oh, that just broke it. <laughs> Definitely did not like what I did there. So, okay, so uh, go ahead and bring that guy back up. I wasn't expecting that to happen. Apparently, you can't do that. It's not a big deal. PC1. Oh, PC1 must have just died. So let's go ahead and just stop that guy. Bring him back up. And then there's PC one. Okay, so now that we're back on, I'm learning as I go. You you've got limited flick, uh, limited support here. Show IP. So we're gonna say IP is 10.1.14.10 slash 24 with a 10.1.14.2 default gateway. So we're going to go ahead and ping 10.1.25.2. It's going to have to go out there and ARP for it. It ARPed. That worked out well. So now that we've got that piece in place, let's go ahead and, and re-enable on switch one IP routing. Go back to PC1 and try to, to ping .10. And as soon as it's has time to ARP and whatnot, we should start to get responses from, this might take a couple of moments for it to actually work the way that I want it to, but I like it when I get the uh, the second or third pain goes through and it resolves it. I have dot two. Okay, and one of these days it should start to work. Let's do a ping 10.1.25.10. PC2, ping 10.1.25.2. Okay, that works. And then PC1, that should start to work here momentarily as well. PC2, 14.2, let's see, switch one, that one works, so PC2 should start to be able to ping this guy, there it goes. So you just ha it's not as dynamic as I would like in a regular switched environment um, here at home. Um, but I am able to ping, and let's do a trace to 10.1.14.10. I trace the default gateway, and then I jump across. So I am being layer three switched at this point. So that's working as it should be. Uh, nothing really too crazy, as you can probably tell. It's just a matter of knowing what it is you're doing. So that's, uh, that's some of the stuff that we're going to see as we move forward. I'm going to keep this stuff in play and um, go from there. Um, that's pretty much it for Layer 3 routing, or inter-VLAN routing, I should say. We'll catch you guys in the upcoming sections. And uh, as always, thank you so much for stopping by, and we'll catch you guys in the next section.